Welcome. Hello. Welcome to Grad Chat by PhD Balance, where we talk about topics of grad school beyond academic research and that may be a bit more difficult to talk about in our day to day. I'm your host, Linda, and I'm currently finishing up my master's in food science in Ireland. And for PhD Balance, I'm on the, I'm the Grad Chat lead and a Twitter coordinator. Don't forget to subscribe to Grad Chat on your chosen platform to get notifications about new episodes. And if you feel like it, maybe leave us a rating or review. It helps people find the podcast. Our topic today is narrowing down a vague major, and I'm so excited to welcome our guest, Emmeline Beltran. Um, Emmeline is a Master's of Arts candidate at California State University, Los Angeles, studying communication. Her main research interests are on crisis communication, specifically how emergencies and social injustices affect diverse populations and their intersectional identities. Long term, she hopes to pursue a research or communication role in social and human services. Welcome, Emmeline. We're so pleased to have you on Grad Chat to discuss your experiences. How are you? Hi, I'm so excited to be here. So thank you so much for reaching out to me to be on this podcast. I've been listening to this for over a year, like since I started grad school. So I am really excited to talk more about my experience and just the field of communication itself. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for being a guest. So um, let's firstly define what communication as a degree is because everyone may not know so can you tell us a little bit about it yep the number one question I get asked is what are you going to do with that when I tell people I'm studying communication but communication is all around us so the very simple definition of communication is when a message gets sent and received and that message, it doesn't just come from humans and communication is more than just talking. It's literally like a billboard advertisement, you know, a TV, a movie, even like nonverbal communication. So someone could say something, but their face can say something else. So it's all about the message that is sent and received in the field of communication studies. That is super cool. <laughs> I think that we don't Plus think that. about it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's that, simple as that. <laughs> that's a really great definition. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you decided to go to grad school in the first place and why you chose communication as a major? Of course. So this was this actually goes back to when I was little, I was actually diagnosed with cancer when I was four and I've been in remission since I was seven. And as a result from chemotherapy, I also developed a visual impairment. So I am a student with a disability. And just at a young age, because I did begin elementary school when I was still in treatment, it was really hard answering questions like, why do you have no hair? Or why do you have these like really big textbooks? Cause I use large print um, material um, growing up. And it was just so hard to explain myself. And at that young age, I pretty much had to learn these words like disability and leukemia and chemotherapy. And when I was trying to explain to my classmates about it, um, they just like didn't understand or there is like kind of a stigma to it because they didn't see, you know, people with disabilities on TV or people with chronic illnesses in their books. And I wasn't considered normal. Um, so it was really difficult to advocate for myself at such a young age. But I knew that I had to because people were going to ask the questions. So just over time, I have learned to like really refine my public speaking and writing skills to really like disseminate like my story in a way that's not too scary, but in a, still like very factual because I know hearing the word cancer at like seven, eight years old can be quite scary. Um, so that's when I just learned how to refine my own communication skills. I was intending to be a healthcare worker because my cancer diagnosis inspired me so much, but I kind of reevaluated my strengths and realized I like meeting new people. I like hearing their stories and I love to write. So I felt like communications was just a really good starting point for me. And I didn't have a set career in mind. I just knew I liked writing and I liked meeting new people and learning more about them. So I was like, we'll go from there. And I'm really thankful that um, I graduated high school and started college in 2015 
because I felt like that was the year where social media was starting to make its like debut um, beyond the personal level. So like people were on Instagram in like the early 2010s, but organizations and businesses, they were just getting on the train around that year. So just gradually over time in undergrad, I was taking a lot of like media classes and I just saw how versatile communications is. And it was really nice to see just as the years went by how pretty much every organization has a communications department. So I decided to continue to get my master's just because I felt like the field is so vague and there is so much more to learn. And I also felt like a master's in communication was not as common as a bachelor's degree in communication. So I got my master's in, or I'm getting my master's in communication um, just to learn more, especially because in undergrad, I studied more the media side of communication. And now I want to study the human side of communication as a graduate student. And I wanted to really refine my research skills in the communication field, because I feel like I have the, the media production side down. So I have experience in like creative writing and photography, but I wanted to take it more in the academic setting because not only do I want to like be involved in like community engagement, but I want to like use their like amplify their voices and like kind of put them like hey like this is a reality within these diverse populations so that's why I'm very passionate about community engagement and research um so now I'm here as a candidate in communication studies and I really found my field in like crisis and emergencies and social services um just because like I know it can be a really scary time but I feel like with the right empathetic communication like a difference can really be made for like the people like around us um, especially with COVID um, so that's just kind of where I'm at <laughs> yeah that is super cool that's like there's so much more to communication than I've ever thought of usually <laughs> we very much think of social media and just posting but like all of that takes a lot of work <laughs> Exactly. And there's so much behind it. Yeah. And that's what I realized like in undergrad, like when I finished my undergrad, um, I felt like I was kind of limited, like, oh, I can only do social media and I can only do journalism. But my master's in communication really showed me that like I can do so much more in communication and that communication is not necessarily a career field. It is an academic discipline. And you just take those skills you learn as a student and you transfer them to any field you want, whether you want to work as a professor or if you want to work in like a government job or like even in the healthcare um, field, which is currently where I'm at since I, I work at a hospital right now. Um, and I felt like the health communication field came very naturally to me because of my personal background with being diagnosed with cancer. So it is like all around us. And even if you are studying a like different field, whether it's STEM, humanities, social science, like you are communicating every single day. Um, so I just think it's like really important. And something that is kind of trending that I've seen in like academic Instagrams or academic Twitters is SciComm or science communication, um, because I know that like some people in the STEM field, they have this amazing research, but when they explain it to someone who's not in STEM, they're just like, what are these molecules? What, what are you talking about? Um, so that really kind of forces um, people in STEM to learn how to disseminate their information in a way that's understanding um, to non-STEM folks. And it does go vice versa versa like those in humanities and social sciences trying to explain their field to non-stem folks so I just think that's the fascination of communication where like I like I am totally capable of learning stem I'm not a stem person by the way but I am capable of learning what other people are researching as long as they you know really have the right you know like communication skills um, and it's hard and we try to improve our communication skills every single day Absolutely. Um, it's very important. And I know a lot of people, um, I've heard the phrase a lot of times, you know, research isn't finished until it's communicated and people are really trying to get better at it. So that is one positive thing. 
that is coming recently and that social media has brought in that it has forced people to think about the way that they communicate with others and it forces them to think about the language they use the way that they're saying things the way that they even just communicate in general (laughs) exactly and I just feel like we saw that a lot with like COVID um, because like you have to deliver like these messages about COVID in such a quick manner and then like also like take into consideration there are communities who are more like disproportionately affected by COVID or who don't have like access to certain um, like to certain like quality of care like even though someone might say or let's say a message from the CDC says like talk to your primary care physician Um, some people don't have a primary care physician and I know this from my personal experience because one of my prior roles before working in a hospital was working with undocumented students at my college campus and that's when I really learned how to like communicate but also take in consideration like having cultural humility and also not making assumptions so that's something like huge I learned like undocumented immigrants they would hear these messages but then they would say like you know I can't access that because I'm a DACA recipient so where what about me and they're just kind of like left um so that's that is like one kind of example I have but yeah just learning like not to make assumptions about someone and having that empathy and even if you do mess up learning how to just apologize and own up to it because there's a difference between saying like I'm sorry I said was inappropriate versus I'm sorry you're hurt very true and I guess talking a bit about you you've said that you kind of naturally fell into or were good at communicating um working in a healthcare setting but um how did you get to there because there are so many different places like you said communications is in pretty much every discipline every area there are communications team teams so how did you choose and what was your journey like to get there Oh yeah, my journey was quite long. Um, So I started like the communications major back in 2015. And at the time, social media, like I said, it wasn't, it was there, but businesses and organizations, they were barely getting on Instagram and Twitter. So at the time, like I felt kind of limited where it's like, oh, the only thing I can do with this major is work in journalism or entertainment and like any like media production. Um, So I was, you know, doing several internships. I was in my community college's school newspaper. And then when I transferred to a four-year university, Cal State Fullerton, I was in their magazine and radio station. And it was a lot of fun, but I felt something like missing like I really liked the idea of being creative and when I write a story or take a picture just like showing my friends like look like I made that I took that photo I had that sense of pride but at the same time like I felt like I wanted to make a difference and I didn't feel that kind of like world change or like social change I mean um, when I was working in these media like um, outlets I know some people do feel that but I personally didn't so I kind of like straight away after like interning at my university's radio station um, and it was 2019 at the time um, so my last year of college and I kind of looked around because at that year um like organizations were finally like on social media. Um, So I wanted to see if I could do like a communications role in more human and social services. And I was really grateful that I did find a communications internship at a hospital in Fullerton called St. Jude Medical Center, um, specifically in their department of wellness where they focus on physical activity, healthy eating and like mental health. Um, And they, also like they have an Instagram but it was being managed by the healthcare team so like the registered dietitian and the therapist would go back and forth posting but then um, they were looking for a communications intern because they were saying like you know like social media is so fast and we're not trained in this 
So I applied, I was interviewed and I said, I got you. And that was my internship in my last year of undergrad. So I did a health communications internship and that was kind of the confirming point where I was like, perfect. Like I kind of found what I've been looking for. Like I can be creative and like really disseminate information for like a certain population because the clients that we were kind of making marketing material for, they were older adults. Um, the older adults, they would either have like a chronic illness or they had like an operation. And then they were referred to the Department of Wellness to really like maintain um, their health um, despite, you know, like a chronic condition or like um, an injury. So like learning how to make messages for older populations, like I had to make sure they were easy to read because their eyesight wasn't as sharp as those who are younger and making sure like the vocabulary was like understandable. So that was kind of my first like introduction to like social services communications. And because my background is so strong in media and content creation, that's when I knew I wanted to move on to a master's program because I wanted to learn more about diverse populations and how to make culturally sensitive messages specifically in um, health and social, um, human and social services. I did a lot of like work experience in education. Um, so I, like I said, I was in the school newspaper, school magazine. Um, I worked as a programming assistant at the Dreamer Center at Cal State LA because I did want to kind of get my foot in the door, in the door with like social justice and such, but there is an opportunity open at Children's Hospital Los Angeles as a peer mentor. Um, so I knew I wanted to work in the healthcare like setting and after working in education for so long. So I finally left education because I was really missing the healthcare setting when like compared to when I interned um, at St. Jude Medical Center, I really missed that environment. So it was really nice to move on to Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, my job title is a peer mentor but we are trying to build up a peer mentorship program that's not gonna start until May or June. And because of my experience as a graduate student and in communications, my role specifically in the program development process is doing qualitative research methods. So I got to like make flyers to recruit patients for focus groups. I wrote like focus group questions and at the time we're recording this, I'm currently working on a needs assessment with one of my co-peer mentors. Um, so it's really nice to finally like find an environment. And it's a place I've always been wanting to work at because that's the same hospital I received treatment from when I was diagnosed with cancer. So this is very like full circle for me. That's great. It's, it's really, really awesome to hear your journey. <laughs> yeah, it was long, but I got there. That's fantastic. And I guess from your experience, if someone was to come up to you and ask you for some advice about narrowing down a vague major, what would you give them? I would say like, just go for an opportunity that really does pique your interest. Um, and just know that every opportunity, like an internship, a club, like that is not your, like, that is not your determination for the rest of your life. Like you're a student for a reason and as a student like this is your chance to really explore what's out there and even if you do like an internship or join a club and at the end of the semester or not even semester like after even just a month you're not satisfied like that's fine like you are free to walk away and just try something new but you really can't find your place until you actually like dip your feet into something um, because that opportunity wouldn't pique your interest if you know you weren't interested like for me like joining the school newspaper I was like hesitant because I was like I don't want to be a journalist but at the same time like I know I really like to write, so I gave it a try and I loved it more than I thought. I was intending to stay for only one semester, but I stayed for a full year and was promoted to news editor very quickly because of how much I liked writing and the advisor saw how well I was doing. And even though at the end of the school year, I knew I wasn't going to do journalism, I learned 
along the way that I really like social media and layout design. So when I transferred to university, I joined the magazine at um, Cal State Fullerton. And that's when I got to do more, I did writing, but also like more design st stuff. And then along the way, like I got the skills I learned from the magazine and then I just wanted to move on to the very next thing. Um, so they're all just stepping stones um and like as cliche as it is like really just do it like if it even just piques your interest um then go for it um and also the great thing about being a communications major is that it's so creative so any opportunity that you go into um you are kind of like the you really just got to make the most of it and you can bring a unique set of skills to really um change the position um, for or not change the position but just like make it your own um, because I know that with every position I entered like I had original ideas but I also like took some ideas from you know whoever was before me and then just like built it from there and it's just kind of like a chain reaction so I know it sounds like very a very drastic change but for me like looking back I do see kind of the the pathway like how I went from a newspaper to a magazine to a radio station um and then when I was at the radio station like the whole like music part entertainment that part was okay but the part I liked most was meeting and interacting with students um so that's when I kind of noted like okay like entertainment's not my thing but I still like the aspect of meeting different people and learning more about them. So that's what, um, that was the stepping stone for me to move on to um, St. Jude Medical Center. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just all a stepping stone. Um, you just, you really, it, involvement is key when you are in a vague major, not just communication. That's, I think, really, really great advice. Um, take whatever <laughs> opportunity you like and, um, I guess for your own um, program, are they are there a lot of opportunities that they help you get? Do you have to go out and find them on your own? Do they just come up <laughs> if yeah. you know where to look? So, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so when I was applying to grad school, that was actually the only communications program I applied to because I applied to two programs that are master's in social science and master in sociological practice because I knew I wanted to work in social services. But um, once I got like my acceptances and then COVID hit because I applied in the fall 19, spring 20 era, which means I started in fall 20, AKA the height of the pandemic. So um, the university I ended up choosing, it's a, it's a university that's like near my house because if I chose the other two, I would have had to move out. But the reason why I only chose that communication graduate program out of everything else was because they had different areas of specialization. Um, even though they didn't require an internship or research or any like teaching, um, they don't require it, but they have opportunities. And so Cal State LA, it's kind of like, you know, when you enroll in this graduate program, you got to make it your own. Um, so there are opportunities, but you really do have to make the effort to look. So if you want to be an instructor, you would be a teaching, uh, you would be a teaching assistant in the department. If you want to do more of a research role, like you would have to contact faculty and see if they have any ongoing research projects and if you could join. Um, and they do send like several internships uh, like here and there. Um, but yeah, at Cal State LA's COM program, um, you do kind of have to look for yourself. Um, whereas an undergrad, um, that was more structured. Like where they said, like, you have to do an internship, you have to do a capstone, you have to do X, Y, and Z. But I was really like lucky that, um, or I would say like, I'm really glad that I had the intuition to find opportunities for myself because Cal State LA, they said like, we don't have a structure, but you know, you're only here for two years. So you got to make the most of it because once you graduate, like you, you got to be ready to, you know, enter your next steps, whether it's a doctoral program or, you know, like entering an industry job. So 
and it's more pave your own pathway. Um, but I think it's actually really cool because um, I get to see in my cohort, everyone's pathways are so different and there's only 11 of us. Um, so it's a really small cohort and just seeing what everyone's up to is really great. That's really awesome. Um, it's great to have that freedom. I know it can be a bit daunting, but it's great <laughs> to have the freedom to yeah. figure out what you want to do. Yeah, that's it's a definitely a double edged sword because the two other programs I applied to, they had that structure and I thrive off structure. So, you know, when COVID hit, no big deal. I didn't know what to do with my life. But um, going into Cal State LA's program where it was kind of more free for all, it was actually like really nice. Like when I wanted to end my research assistantship, I just ended it like no questions asked. Um, and, you know, when people wanted to leave a certain opportunity, you know, they just kind of left and they moved on to the next big thing. Um, because I know that certain programs you have to do like an internship for however many months or however many hours. So that is actually, I actually am glad that I had more of the freedom as a graduate student because the classes themselves are quite demanding. Um, and also it's COVID. So like our energy and headspace is different than what it was pre-COVID. That is, is very true. Very, very true. Our head, yeah. energy and headspace is very different. Um, I guess uh, we're nearly out of time. Wow. It's gone really, really fast. That was but, fast. Um, <laughs> It is. It goes really fast. Um, is there anything else that you would like to bring in before we finish up? Um, not really. I would just say communications out there. So next time you are, you know, looking at a billboard or looking at an ad or just talking to someone, just be like, hmm, how is that communicated? Um, yeah, <laughs> but I just want to say that, like, I would get the question a lot, like, what are you going to do with that? And sometimes it would feel very like daunting, but just don't let anyone get that to you because it's actually very rewarding to be such an expert and a scholar in a field that people don't realize is just all around us. And this advice and my experience, this does not just apply to communication, like psychology and sociology, like, um, pretty much like I want to say social sciences or humanities it really is like all around us um we just got to you know it's all about kind of our own perspective so you know I see things from a communication perspective um but you know like we are all like interconnected even you stem folks like SciCom is out there um but yeah <laughs> communications all around us. And also I wanted to thank you again for allowing me to be a guest on your podcast. Thank you so much for coming. That is absolutely amazing. I guess the very last question I have for you is where can people find you if they would like to connect with you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is the same. It's MBs, E M B. E E E Z E. I know that's a lot of E's, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be like linked somewhere. Um, we will. We'll put it in the description. Also, yeah. <laughs> and you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Emmeline Beltran. I'm like one of the only Emmeline Beltrans in this planet. Um, <laughs> just find the one from Los Angeles and that one's me. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest. It's absolutely been amazing to talk with you. Um, this has been Grad Chat by PhD Balance. Our episodes are now posted simultaneously on our podcast and YouTube channel, Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. To find our podcast episodes, just search Grad Chat on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can connect with PhD Balance on our website at phdbalance.com or on social media at Twitter and Instagram at phd underscore balance. Until next time, bye and take care of yourself.